Hello and welcome to today's live stream on managing job search stress. Whether you are tuning in live or watching the replay, I am so delighted that you're here. I'm Diana YK Chan. I'm founder of My Markability. I help ambitious professionals to differentiate as top talent, stand out, get hired, and earn more. So tell me, where are you from and what's your profession? So the purpose of this topic is really I want to offer some tips and strategies on how to deal with stress. Um, studies show that losing a job is one of the top five most stressful events in one's lives. And uh, I've been hearing a lot of people who are stressed and I figured I would tackle this topic on how to deal with stress. And so in today's topic, I'm gonna talk about 10 stress signs, uh, 10 job search, uh, 10 strategies to deal with stress as well. And I'm also gonna offer you five mantras to help you stay positive and uh, focused as well, okay? So share with me, where are you from and what is your uh, profession there? comment i also want to share here from you um what is currently your biggest stress like what are you stressed out about uh tell me about that we'll love to hear from you there i will be looking into the the chat room uh, there okay uh so just to let you know uh, right now i am broadcasting on linkedin youtube and facebook um so if you're having any lag time or audio issues make sure to um uh, make sure to also oh, let me just see here i just want to make sure people can hear me uh, as well can you guys hear me forgot to put my headset on here. I just wanna make sure you guys could hear. I got too excited with the video here. Okay, can you guys hear me okay there? Yeah? So let me just double check to make sure everything is working. Perfect, okay, perfect. You guys can hear me, perfect, thank you. <laughs> I thought you guys couldn't hear me there. Okay, so where was I? I wanted to, yeah, to check in to see where you guys are uh, from, what's your profession, and what are you most stressed out about? You know, type in that. Um, this is not my typical talk, um, but, you know, we're going to be talking about emotions and feelings uh, today. And I think it's an important one because, you know, when you're stressed about uh, a job or work, it definitely impacts our mental health, how we show up in our lives to our family members as well. So I thought I would talk about this uh, topic there. Okay, so let's dive uh, right in. So I see a lot of you here. Thank you. All right. Yes, thanks. You can hear me. Awesome. So a little bit about myself. Um, I'm Diana Waike Chan. I'm a former recruiter turned career coach, speaker, and trainer at My Market Ability. Uh, one of my highlights is I've supported thousands of uh, clients all over the world to land job offers at uh, top companies, uh, earning five to six figures more in various industries, professions, and level from entry level all the way to C level executive uh, there. So one of my proud recent highlights is actually helping a C-level executive to land an opportunity in a tech company and uh, really proud uh, of that there. In terms of my expertise, my expertise is in branding, marketing, selling yourself effectively. So uh, I have a background in uh, recruitment, uh, over 10 years of, of recruiting, and also worked in uh, marketing and consulting as well. So a lot of times um, I work with job seekers who uh, half of them are already uh, lost their job and wondering what's next and how to position themselves for uh, success. So I'm also a trained life coach where I help you look at it from the big picture perspective of what's important to you. And then how do you really brand yourself effectively to increase your markability, visibility, and credibility there. I've been recognized as one of the top job search experts to follow on LinkedIn um, by JobScan. So if we're not connected yet, please make sure to follow me or connect with me on uh, LinkedIn. All right, so let's dive into um, the topic here. Okay, so I'm going to talk about the 10 job search stress signs and feel free to comment or click like as we go if any of this resonates with you. Um, I, I want to hear from you as well. Okay. So the first job search stress sign is, you know, feeling worried all the time, right? Of uh, just that anxiousness or anxiety, feeling just, um, you know, not sure what to do next. And uh, it's pretty common there. I don't know if anyone can relate. And I'm hearing this a lot from people who have been unemployed for quite some time, really worried about um, you know, about money, about uh, their family, worrying where they can find their next job there. So just uh, worrying all uh, the time there. Next sign is just a feeling that overwhelmed or pressured. Um, you know, sometimes, you know, if you are the um, sole income provider in your family there, there could also be that pressure from your, your spouse or loved ones to, to find a job. And that could put a lot of uh, stress on, on you there. 
And the third one is feeling desperate or impatient. Uh, and I see this a lot as a coach where oftentimes um, people come to me for those who are unemployed, usually they've been looking for quite some time and they're already feeling a little bit uh, desperate and impatient there. And, um, you know, this, you know, definitely impacts how you show up and how you talk to people. And the other is just feeling angry or uh, frustrated, right? And things are not working out or getting rejection after rejection. Um, it's it's very, um, you know, frustrating there. And I don't know if anyone could you relate to this, um, but I've actually, I want to share my personal story. Um, I, I actually lost my job over 10 years, uh, 10 years ago now, about uh, January 2011. And I remember it was a pretty emotional roller coaster ride there in terms of, you know, a lot of times we attach our identity to, to the job. And I felt um, a lot of um, doubt, uh, shame, embarrassment, uh, not sure what to do. Um, even though I knew I was performing well as well, I kicked ass in, in, in the role. But what was interesting was that I didn't really learn about this or realize the lesson learned was that how that experience really helped me become a more compassionate and empathetic coach. Like I realized that after two or three years later when I started my business, but also that opportunity of losing my job, um, it was also the launch pad to kicking, kickstarting my business. You know, within a week I started my business, I printed like 5,000 business cards, even though there was like a typo on it as well. I told everyone that I'm, I'm a coach, speaker, and uh, within, uh, a couple of weeks, I got my first speaking gig there. Um, and then interestingly, uh, within another month, um, I was, uh, I, I, I got a job offer working at Google as their first and only recruiter here in Canada to help them double their office size. And it was an interesting for me, like I went through a huge emotional roller coaster. Like there were times where I felt angry and frustrated, sad, embarrassed, everything, all these emotions that, that went through that I had to process. And I had to talk to friends um, seek out coaching help as well uh, to process all emotions. And it actually took me quite some time to even process that feeling of loss or embarrassment for, you know, the initial year as well there. So I want to acknowledge for those who are going through this, I want to let you know that um, you're not alone, right? And there's not like something wrong with you. It's just, um, you know, it's like processing, uh, go through, going through grief, right? When you lose a, a job there. So it's okay to process those emotions there. Five, fifth one is that lack of focus or concentration. When you are stressed about um, your, your job search there, it uh, could also impact in terms of your productivity and uh, performance. Um, this could also lead to, you could probably relate to this, not just, you know, regular stress is that that general aches and pain, muscle tension as well, right? You probably feel it maybe like here in your body, um, you know, when you're worried uh, there, there's all these aches and pains or your lower back uh, there. Um, or this could also lead to indigestion um, of not eating well. Uh, those could have an impact as well when you're stressed. Another is problems with sleeping, right? When you're worried, we have so many thoughts going through our head or going through all these negative thoughts and it's impacting our sleep. I don't know if any of you could relate to, to this there, but um, you know, when sometimes, especially you're thinking about all these things and what you wanna do, you know, this totally impacts the way, um, you know, us getting rest. And then lastly, it's just, you know, because of lack of sleep, you feel tired and exhausted there, All right? So can you relate to any of this? You know, I'm curious to know for those who are here um, and any of this, even, even for me right now, I know lately, like I've been really busy with, with work as well. I definitely feel, you know, sometimes like they're tired and all that. And, and you know, sometimes there's, it's good to have some stress, you know, but when you have it too much, it could lead to, um, uh, job search, like even depression, burnt out and all that. And that's when we really need to deal with that there. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. I see some of you are <laughs> pretty quiet or haven't chimed in yet, but that's totally okay. I know this is like a more feeling emotion type of topic. So if you don't want to uh, uh, chime in, that's totally okay. But I, I want to share with you, like, you know, I'm here to really support you. And this is why I'm talking about this uh, topic there. So I want to share with you some strategies on how to really deal with uh, stress. I'm going to walk you through. Oh, give me one second here. Oh, what happened? Oh, there you go. 10 stress management strategies on what to how to deal with that. Okay. All right. Caitlin said that um, definitely feel a lot of those. It's good to know that I'm not alone. Yes, yes, you can relate to all of this. Yes, 
can relate to all yes to all of the above yes thank you you know it, it's important to share about this because it's definitely impacts our mental health and you know the purpose of this is really you know to talk about it uh, there so that we can all uh you know cope with the stress especially during tough times like this um even with the holidays coming up i know a lot of people have expressed to me stress there's there's two what i'm seeing right now there are people who are unemployed and are stressed about finding a job and then I'm also seeing those who are working, have a full-time job and they are burnt out and they wanna make a change, but they are um, too busy or overworked to make a stress or, or overworked to actually make that change and feel also guilty in um, making that change. And as a result, they're feeling overwhelmed and stressed as well. So I'm seeing that there. Like I have clients who have a busy job, three kids, four kids, um, lots to deal with, and but just feel totally unfulfilled, unhappy, feeling in a toxic environment, and are just so stressed out and want to get out and feeling stuck. Right? So I'm going to walk you through some strategies to to talk about how to cope with this uh, as well. Right? Yeah, yeah, Jesus definitely can have felt the roller coaster, right? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, he might said here, you know, feeling scared entering the job market after being at home for many years, also being generation uh, X50 plus. Yes, I totally understand. Um, you know, Huma, I want to share with you, I recently supported a client who was a stay at home mom for uh, uh, over 10 years. And she also had her own side business as well in, in marketing. And uh, she was able to, to land a job offer uh, back in communications and um, you know, uh, and was able to increase her salary as well. So it is definitely possible, even if you've been out of work for quite some time, um, you just need to take the necessary steps to make yourself more marketable there, okay? All right, so let's talk about some strategies, okay? So, uh, strategy number one is the self-awareness. So self-awareness is key, right? In order to make better choices that lead to better results, we need to be self-aware, first of all, in terms of what's really causing the stress there, right? So know your triggers. What, what's really triggering you? Uh, journal those thoughts down, okay? Um, it could be, I don't know, it could, anything could be a trigger. Sometimes for me, like I have two young kids who are three and five. Sometimes that could be a trigger for me. I'll, I'll get frustrated. Or um, a trigger could be that, you know, that you're not hearing back uh, from anyone. Um, so jot those down to be aware of what are the triggers of stress and journal that because that's going to help you then think of other ways to, to deal with it there. Okay. Strategy number two, okay, if you're really stressed out is I want you to really implement some self care activities, okay, such as exercise, uh, exercise is a great way to um, optimize your energy. I know for myself, um, you know, since being at home, like I, I didn't exercise too much until actually I've been doing like walks and all that throughout this year in the summer, um, until like, you know, with the winter hit there, we recently got a, a bike and I've been exercising down in my basement, um, uh, cycling for 20, 30 minutes uh, every other day. And I've noticed that really has um, make me feel better and elevated my uh, energy there. So make sure that you take care of your own health and uh, eating well there. Now there is to meditate. Meditating is a great way to um, calm your mind and to feel more grounded and centered. Um, another is to play music, play some happy music, some fun music. Um, I like to, I actually really love, love like the spa zen type of music. So I subscribe to this uh, channel called uh, Soothing, Soothing Relaxation. And I, they have just great, like, you know, just soothing, relaxing music um, that I just play in the background there. Um, is fill your cup. You want to feel good. Do things that feel good to you, right? So even though we're stuck at home, you can do things to make yourself uh, feel good. So I'll give an example. Like even for me, you can see here, um, you know, right now, like I have like a diffuser behind me to also just make the environment, um, you know, smell nicer there to, to feel good. Okay. So self-care is so, so key there. Like, so for me, like actually before COVID, like I actually really enjoy going for um, like a facial uh, treatment or like a massage treatment to, to relax and, and unwind. Now, obviously with COVID, that's something much harder to do. So I actually 
I purchased uh, this summer, like this uh, facial roller um, that, you know, you could like, you know, do some like facials on your face or massage. And actually my kids love this, that where they can give them like a little back massage there. And I really like it. It's, it's actually, you know, I'm not trying to sell her, but it's just something that I discovered that I like. Um, it's a through the happy brand uh, facial roller that I found it really helpful in terms of just um, unwinding with all those muscle tension there. And, and my kids love it as well. They asked me to give them like a back massage at night. Strategy number three, okay, is to uh, think about your surroundings. So this is really the settings, the environment, um, your home, your place, right? Or what, what does it feel like? You want to make a feel good environment as this is going to give you um, inspiration and ideas of how you can really tackle your job search effectively. You know, tidy and light up your space, your room, okay? Make it feel good, right? You can use like a candle or a diffuser, like you can see here back here, like I have candles and diffusers and it just makes your space, like, you know, just like nicer as well or having like natural lighting also uh, is uh, helpful there, okay? Strategy number four is to set a schedule. Um, you know, this is all about having a routine, um, have set weekly goals of what you want to accomplish, start the morning strong. Um, so for me, like right now, like I, before I have any meetings, like I like to either meditate, journal, uh, exercise, um, or like have a cup of tea, you know, so just starting my morning strong with a clear mind helps set the day, uh, the rest of your day there. Okay. Um, setting boundaries. So I know you probably heard that, you know, when you're unemployed, you want to treat your job search like a full-time job, right? But it's also so important to make sure that you um, take breaks and set boundaries uh, there. So for example, like having a stretch break, a lunch break, a coffee break, um, you know, those breaks is going to help you uh, refresh your, your mind there and make you feel uh, better. Right. Um, set those like milestone goals. So for example, you can say like this week, you're going to work on, you know, completing like the resume or the week after you're going to work on reaching out to people or even like setting that root schedule, like even by hour by hour. Um, you know, I like to break it down by morning and afternoon. So the morning could be something where you're feeling most protect protective that you actually doing like the writing work of content creation for your marketing assets of your resume, your LinkedIn profile, your elevator pitch, and the afternoon you can reserve it for applying for jobs online and now working there. Okay. The point here is that having a scheduled routine, it's going to feel like you are like, you know, going to work or doing something. And it's gonna help you um, stick to that and feel that you have something to look forward to there. Um, you know, I'm just gonna share like, even like when COVID hit, like back in March, uh, you know, my I have two kids, right, three and five, they were at home with us for the first uh, four, four to five months there. I had a very strict schedule because, you know, they were with me and I only had certain times where I could actually do webinars or have consultation calls. So I had a really strict schedule where like the first two hours in the morning, my mother-in-law would come over to take care of them so that I could actually take calls. And then after that, I look after them for two hours uh, during the lunch break. And then after that, another two hours, my husband will take them out for a car ride nap so that I could actually do webinars or do coaching. And so I stuck with that schedule for the first four months. Um, and then I optimized it after when they went back to, to daycare, I changed it up. And then in fall, I changed up again. And I realized that I was actually, I was actually hitting um, burnt out as well too, because I was so booked up back to back with, with meetings, um, pretty much all day. So in September, I decided that I really want to optimize my schedule where I still can be productive, like be positively occupied, meaning that I'm full, but still have enough time and energy for myself there. So for example, like I like to leave Fridays to myself to either catch up, run errands, do some self care activities, uh, respond to things there. Um, so I plan, to, I, I usually uh, try not to have meetings if I don't uh, need to uh, there. So set that for yourself, it work, works for you, you keep optimizing and I'm changing it up there. Okay. Strategy number five is the self-talk. So we have like, I don't know, like thousands of thoughts that we go through uh, every single day, right? You wanna make sure that you are having this positive self-talk, okay? Because um, positive self-talk has proven, studies have shown that it will actually help reduce uh, stress there. So, um, you know, you want to ask yourself, like, what's the narrative that you're telling uh, yourself and really uh, changing up and think about positive affirmations or creating a visual board, vision board as well to help you have something to uh, look forward to. OK, I want to read you this um, 
uh, saying there is that, you know, with self-talk, you know, when you change your thinking, you change your beliefs. And when you change your beliefs, you change your expectations. When you change your expectations, you change your attitude. And when you change your attitude, you change your behavior. When you change your behavior, you change your performance. And when you change your performance, you change your life. Okay. So keep in mind of those thoughts that you go through throughout the day and ask yourself, what is the perspective that you're in, right? Are you in that perspective where you're feeling angry, anxious, feeling frustrated, or um, are you in this perspective where you can switch to being hopeful um, or believe that there's something out there or something to look forward to, right? Now, you know, people always ask me, they're like, Diana, you're always so... Um, positive or passionate and does that mean you don't have anything that you're worried about it's not true you can still be optimistic but yet still have you know challenges to go through as well it's a matter of shifting perspective right um tony robbins brother tony robbins like he talks about energy and how we show up and he talks about our state how you can switch your state just just like that and going from let's say that negative energy to like the positive energy so it's all in the lines of how how we think uh, there okay all right so someone said that i love that all right that's a great quote thank you thank you yeah that's something really resonated with me um i know i'll share something personal uh with you guys here like you know that's the whole self-talk it's because we also have so many thoughts um, when I when I had my uh, second uh, child, this was like what three years ago. Um, I actually went through um, uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, depression, uh, postpartum blues, depression there. And I I know I went through a lot of um, negative thoughts. And for me, I think it was like feeling not doing enough, not good enough, or I really want to get back into my business, get back into my game. And so what I realized was that I was just so I was so hard on myself in terms of my own expectations of what I wanted to achieve and accomplish. And I had to learn to let go or change my perspective of instead of thinking I need to achieve all these things this year, I focus on just working on one thing um, a day instead of having like a multiple things to, to work on there, right? So a lot of times it's also like, what is the expectations that we have for ourselves that's causing us to feel stressed out there, okay? Okay, yeah, so someone wrote like having that daily schedule is very important also a balanced lifestyle, absolutely there. Strategy number six is to seek support, right? So. You know, I think seeking support is a great way to help you um, gain new perspective as well. So you want to talk to friends or family members, who, those who actually will lift you up, not those who would actually put you down, right? Um, surround yourself with people who would encourage you, empower you, inspire you versus those who are judging um, the decisions that you're making with your career and job search. Okay, that is so, so key, right? Every time I go through any type of... Um, uh, training with any gurus or leaders, they always talk about, you know, um, the, the, the five people that you surround yourself with, right? In terms of your success is also based on the people that you surround yourself with. So keep in mind, I could check in terms of who are the people that you're surrounding yourself with to help you elevate uh, your game there. Okay. Um, finding accountability buddy. So I know that, you know, job search can feel lonely, but it's so important, you know, to maybe find someone. You can find maybe some job search groups online or through online events. Find someone who can be your accountability buddy to, to check in uh, with each other, to practice, let's say, mock interviews, to celebrate uh, progress there. Okay. Another is um, coaching and therapy. So I actually have, I have clients who come see me, but they also see a therapist as well. Because coaching is really focused more on about your future goals and what you want to achieve and what you're working towards. Uh, whereas therapy is more about processing emotions or talking about your past more. And, um, you know, I, I have seen like those who actually like who have gone through like if they if you know, if they're really, let's say negative and need that help in therapy, um, it really helps them uh, shift that perspective in uh, being ready to move forward of, of what they want to achieve there. OK. OK. Yeah, Richard mentioned here that personally, friends have been a great source of support. I'm really glad to to hear that. Um, you know, I, I actually I was reading somewhere there was a study saying that um, 
uh, you know, I think it was through, yeah, through LinkedIn news here that they were published in a study that how a lot of people, when they lost their job, that they um, hibernated. They didn't really want to reach out to their friends because they felt embarrassed and didn't want to talk to anyone. And uh, it is so important to actually to, to reach out and talk about it because honestly, you're not alone. Like I know myself, like even my own circle of friends, um, you know, I have people, I know, I know friends who work in the hospitality industry that got impacted, who lost their job. And it's also so important to check in with each other as well. Um, even though if you may say you are in a job, you want to check in with others to see if there's anything that you can help uh, out with. Like I would invite, you know, those I know who are impacted to like my events, you know, offer uh, support there. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Someone asked if I can post a sequence of chains that I went through. Love that. Okay, sure. I can do that after this. I will share that later on. No problem. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. So I'm curious to know, like, have any of you gone through, you know, coaching or therapy and has that been helpful for you? Um, or do you have like an accountability to help you um, uh, with your uh, supporting your job search there? Feel free to comment. Okay, so strategy number seven is to slow down, right? If you've been searching for a while, um, it's totally okay to slow down, right? You can totally take a break, take a day off, um, sleep in a little bit uh, to quiet your mind, okay? Because we go through so many of these thoughts there. It's totally okay to give yourself a little bit of that downtime. Okay. Now, what you want to be careful, though, like, you know, and I've seen this is that you don't want to just take an entire month off. You know, you can take some time off, especially if you are in a need of finding something. Okay, you want it, you can give yourself a break, but don't go completely, you know, um, MIA where you do nothing there, right, that that's when it becomes more, um, uh, I guess, like risky or concerning uh, there. So you want to do something about it. Okay. Um, so quieting your mind, it could be, you know, if you can, like doing like a nature walk or listening to um, some meditation music as well, that would also help you uh, quiet your mind. Okay. Solitude is a great way to also, um, when you quiet your mind, to, um, what was my friend saying the other day? Um, she, we we're talking about mindfulness, right? When you practice also like mindfulness and you quiet your mind, um, your limiting beliefs or saboteurs won't be there. Right, because when you feel grounded and centered, um, those saboteurs um, won't be able to, to to get into to your mind there. Okay, so this is something like a practice that you need to really work on to really feel feel that um, that strength and power there. Okay, strategy number eight is to go on a social media detox. Okay, um, I don't know if any of you tried this. I've actually tried this, like going on a social media detox, like off the grid for like a week. I did this in the summer and it's actually quite refreshing or even turning off some apps on your phone. Uh, that way you don't have to also constantly be checking the news, right? Sometimes like even listening to like the negative news, it gets, causes that stress and anxiety uh, as well, right? Um, so turning it off is really helpful, like going on a, off a detox on it for a week. Uh, I find that really good there. Okay, has anyone tried this? Um, you know, I can tell like when, you know, with um, when everything hit back in June and July time frame with the whole, um, all the things that are going on in the world with racism and everything. And, um, you know, it, it also really hit me as well. And uh, I was going through a lot, a lot of process my own emotions there. And I had to go on a social media detox uh, off, for, off the grid a little bit as well so that I can get back into my game. And I also think I realized was that because I was talking to a lot of job seekers and helping a lot of people, I was also absorbing a lot of the the energy, and I really needed to to uh, decompress in order to bring back back my to my A game to help more people there. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Let's see. What's some of them? What are some shares here? I have an accountability buddy, buddy talking to her every day helps me focus on my goals. Amazing human. That's great to hear that you guys still talk to each other every day. That's amazing. Oh, let's see here. Besides the jobs or stress, I lost three family members this year. I felt totally burnt out emotionally. Meanwhile, I launched a startup and what was making me sane as I was working 24 seven. Oh, I'm so sorry to hear, you know, like, you know, yeah, losing family members is, is really hard. And then being totally burnt out and then starting a startup. Yeah. So that there's a lot of you think, but there's so, so much to deal with. And this is why like we, you have to check in and, 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 um, and, and don't compare yourself to others, right? We were all going through our own journey. We all have our own stuff to deal with, our own suck to deal with there. So, um, you know, don't compare your, your journey to, to other people there. Okay. 
Yeah, someone shared that. I unfollowed some pages on Facebook and felt better instantly because I stopped comparing myself to others. Oh my goodness, this is a huge one, right? You're right, right? I've just, um, I've heard like people sometimes like unfollowing people on like Instagram as well, like, you know, what the reality that they're projecting here. And um, I'm so glad to hear that, Gretchen, that you did that too, that you instantly felt better and stop comparing yourself to others. And this is so key, right? Like, you know, when you are in this comparison mode, you're always going to feel like, I'm not doing enough or I'm not good enough or is there something wrong with me? Da, 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 da. All these negative thoughts, right? So um, it's important to keep that uh, in check there, okay? Yes, okay, yeah, turn off your phone or notifications. I know something I need to do more of as well, like really just completely uh, turn off the phone. There was a book, I forgot what it's called. I think it's, is it 24-6? 24-6, they talk about this family um, uh, where they actually go on, I, I don't remember what the book name is, is um, they actually go uh, off um, social media on the weekends, their entire family, uh, like no phones, no social media, and they just really spend quality uh, time with uh, with each other there. Okay, strategy number nine is to savor your wins, right? So this is all about, you know, celebrating a progress along the way find the silver lining even when times are tough you know treat yourself to just something small it doesn't have to be something like fancy or anything but it'd be just something small right of uh, that let's say that you submit an application or that you received a call um treat yourself to, to something little uh because oftentimes we i don't think we do enough of that especially when you're thinking oh i need to get that job and uh, but i think if you just do little things to also make yourself feel good at the end of the day um it's going to help you with uh showing up with more uh positive uh energy there Okay. All right. Strategy number 10 is to seize the day, right? Do something fun, right? I know job search, we got to keep in mind, it could be um, a long journey there, right? So make sure that you're also doing something fun each day, make the most of it. Um, do something that you have something to look forward to, spend quality time with your loved ones, be silly. Um, like, you know, sometimes when I'm, you know, just really busy with work, but I'll, I'll remind myself, I need to just go out there and like play with my kids, right? Just be silly, be goofy. We'll turn up some music and dance, um, you know, or we'll just, you know, do something just silly there and they, they love it. And it's just like being, um, being like a child again, right? Um, and, and having that curiosity, okay? That is uh, so important. Oh, I'm so glad to hear that this talk is so healing. Oh, thank you so much. I, I don't normally do a talk like this, but I've, I've been talking to a lot of people actually who've just been messaging me and my own clients who've been going through all these emotions. And I just felt called to do a talk like this, um, you know, especially times like this. So I, I'm really glad to hear that. Thank you for, for sharing that there. Okay. Yeah, you'll find that. A lot of things I'm sharing, it's not particularly job search related. However, by doing these things, it's going to help you feel better. Here's what I do know, okay, because like, I've worked with so many people now, is that if you've been unemployed for quite some time, your mindset is impacted, your confidence is impacted. As a result, you're going to feel, um, you know, you can just feel the body line, you're going to feel like you are... Um, what's the word here? You are like, like shrinking or playing small and you're not going to show up as fully. Right. And so this is why this work is actually so important. Right. Um, even when I was talking to a client yesterday, she's in a very demanding job, super stressed, super unhappy and burnt out. And she wants to find a new job in the new year. And I was like, okay, well it makes it. Yes. I want to support her on that. But before we do that, we need to first um, do some self care set some boundaries, start saying no to things at work so that you can make time for what's important, right? Um, if you don't do this, it's really hard for you to actually present yourself at your best, to sell yourself at your best. This is why this stuff is uh, important there, okay? Okay, so I'm going to move into talking about some mantra, just some positive affirmations to, to help you here. Okay, so these are some things like mantras that I've also sent to to my clients. I actually create these phone screen affirmations that I create from uh, Canva. Uh, and, uh, you know, some people really enjoy just something like as a reminder there. So I want to give this, uh, share this with you guys as well. So mantra number one is that I will get the job. This may take a long time, but it will happen. I will not give up. Okay, I will not give up. 
right? So just to remind yourself, back to that positive self-talk here, right? That you're going to get the job. You know it's going to happen. You recognize it could be a while, but you're not going to give up, okay? Mantra number two is that I have unique gifts and talents that are a perfect match for my new job. Right, so this is part of also setting the intention, the affirmation that your belief as well. You believe that you have great talents and gifts to offer. Okay, you first need to recognize your own gifts in order to convey your value to others. There. Okay, this is something I work with a lot of my clients, where um, this ties into the whole imposter syndrome as well um, of not feeling like good enough. But you first need to recognize and believe that you have that in order to also sell yourself uh, effectively to get the job offer. Okay. Mantra number three is that I am unstoppable. I am creating the career of my dreams, right? Just stating this out loud is just sending that belief and sending that intention there as well of what you're going to attract back, believing that you are unstoppable there, okay? And that you are designing the career of your dreams, okay? Um, you know, something to think about, like, you know, one thing I do know is from my experience, I've seen this right now, having done you know, um, career coaching and job support for the past a decade here, the job market pre-COVID has already been um, competitive. And now like with COVID, so many people lost their jobs. It's been even more competitive, right? So meaning that there are a lot more people looking for jobs, um, um, competing against like, you know, jobs that are right, competing against jobs there. So something I think to think about, you know, besides like looking for, let's say a full-time job, it could be maybe like a contract opportunity. It could be a side hustle that you could start as well, you know, there's going to be a lot of continued organizational changes going forward in the next year or so. There will be like layoffs happening as well. So, you know, think about things that you can maybe do on the side as well as as a side hustle to also start making money. If that's something that you need there. Okay. Um, actually, there I don't remember what the stat is, but I know there's been a lot of people who also started like online businesses uh, this year, uh, being that we are more in like a virtual uh, world there. Okay. Yes, love mantra number two. Yes, yes, not always easy. I know it's not always easy, right? Um, but it's really that belief and recognizing your own value. So, so whoever wrote that here, I want to challenge you to write down like what are your gifts and what are your talents? I want you to also ask your friends, your colleagues, set out like a survey, like a Google form of what are your, like, you know, what words would you use to describe your talents and gifts? What value do you provide? Okay. This is also going to help you give the affirmation, the validation. It's also going to come up with the words as well of what your gifts are that you can also share with uh, the potential employer there. Okay. Okay. So mantra number four is I am worthy doing a job that I love. The word worthy, you know, comes here like being that you this is all about the value, believing that you're worth it, that you're doing a job that you love there, okay? Not settling. Um, you know, I had a client recently who thought she found her dream job um, and she quickly accepted and it was like a virtual opportunity, but it turned out that it was totally uh, misaligned in terms of how the job was sold to her to what the actual job was. And she was all stressed about it because she just started that job, you know, for about a month. And it's like, do I continue with this? And this was totally impacting her in mental health. She was having anxiety. Um, she couldn't sleep well, couldn't eat well. It was totally impacting everything. So we talked about it. And we're like, do we continue this opportunity for the next 6, 12 months? Like just trying to survive? Or do we look for something new? And at the end, you know, she decided that her mental health was so important that she decided to look for something new. And unfortunately, unfortunately, she was able to land something relatively quickly within like, you know, three weeks proactively uh, searching and, and this was also due that we've also done a lot of the upfront work already in terms of like her resume, her interview prep, her confidence, and she was able to find something really uh, relatively quickly there. So if you are also in that toxic environment for those who are working, I want to give you that permission that um, don't feel guilty looking for a job, right? I've been hearing this right now, like, oh, I feel guilty looking for a job because so many people are, um, are, are looking for a job right now. I should feel blessed that I have a job. But if you are in this toxic environment and this is impacting your health, impacting the way you show up, the way you're interacting at home, you need to do something about it there. Okay. Because if you don't, no one else will. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Someone wrote doing a SWOT analysis is useful and focusing on your strengths. Yes. Check out Strengths Finder uh, to identify like your top five strengths. That's a great way uh, to understand more about you there. 
Mantra number five is every action I take moves me closer towards my ideal career. Every action I take moves me closer towards my ideal career. So this is all about believing like for every step you take, you are getting closer and closer. Okay. And um, to not give up. So I had a client who was interviewing for like dozens of opportunities and was not closing. And um, obviously he was frustrated and, uh, but we continue to work on his mindset and we continue to work on his interview skills. Every time he went for an interview, he got better and better in terms of more confidence, more compelling, more concise, more connected to the interviewers. And eventually he closed the offer there. So you have to believe that every action that you're taking is going to move you towards closer to that and ask yourself, what can I do differently? What can I do to elevate my game? What can I do to improve my markability and uh, confidence there? Okay, so now we're into Q&A time there. So I want to share with you something as well. I have um, an upcoming event that is next week. It's called the Career Relaunch Summit. That's on December 17th to 18th. I have gathered over 15 plus career and leadership experts to come talk to you on topics related to mindset, career clarity, confidence, resumes, LinkedIn, networking, um, managing like your emotions as well. Um, some amazing speakers that I brought together and I would love to have you there. Make sure to, um, sign up at mymarkability.com forward slash summit. Uh, check out the amazing speakers that I have uh, put together there. Um, let me just see here. Yes. It's going to be on the 17th to 18th next Thursday and Friday. This is going to be one of my biggest events that I'm organizing and it's free because, um, you know, with the holiday season, I really want to give back in a big way to help many job seekers here. Um, I have a goal to reach over 10,000 people with the combined efforts of all the speakers that I brought together. And so I would love to see you there. Please also, um, share this with any of your friends or family or your colleagues who could benefit uh, this. Okay. Feel free to click like and uh, subscribe there. Okay. So let me see if there are any questions here. Okay. So I think someone asked me to share, let me see, where can I share the file that we're talking about the change you're thinking? Uh, let me see if I can share screen here. You guys see this? Let me share. Okay, so this is the file that I was talking about. When you change your thinking, you change your beliefs. When you change your beliefs, you change your expectations. And when you change your expectations, you change your attitude. And when you change your attitude, you change your behavior. And when you change your behavior, you change your performance. And when you change your performance, you change your life. Okay, so I hope you find that helpful. I'm going to also share with you, since I have you guys here as well, I'm going to share with you um, a little bit more info about here the summit as well. So I just want to share this with you so that you can see this uh, there. Okay. So you can see here, this is the page, and I want to share with you the speakers that you're going to hear from. Um, I have like LinkedIn top voices of 2020 uh, with sh a show here and Kamara Toffolo, uh, Adrian Tom. I also have like top job search ex experts like Madeline Mann, um, you know, Hannah Morgan, rising stars like Austin Belsack, Jonathan Javier as well. And we have like a master uh, certified coach, Joshua Miller, who's coming to speak. Uh, my dear friend, uh, Seema Soda, who is also a certified coach and leadership trainer, where she's going to talk about how to unleash your soul purpose for greater joy and impact. Who doesn't want that? Right? So I will love to see you guys there. If you look at this amazing line of speakers that we have, All right? Um, my friend, Betty Campa, she helps um, people to build a six-figure coaching business. So for those who are at that experience uh, mid to executive level and want to become a coach, she's going to talk about that. And then Anna is also going to talk about like LinkedIn. So I would love to see you guys there. Feel free to um, hit the RSVP button and share this with your friends. Okay. Okay. So let me see if there are any other questions here. Okay. 
have questions. Do I have a podcast? I would love to join that too. I don't have a podcast. You know, what's funny was that I've been debating about starting a podcast for three or four years. And then until recently this year, I got access to LinkedIn Live. And I was like, I'm going to start doing live streams. And I decided to do live streams over podcasts just because I'm more a, a visual person and I love connecting with people live. Uh, podcasts, I feel like I'm just talking to a mic and not talking to anyone. Uh, so I decided to do a live stream just so that I can actually talk to you guys live. So that's what I'm going to do um, right now uh, to put my focus there. So so thank you for that. I like your energy. Uh, really appreciate that. Yeah. And so the other thing is I have a lot of that, the energy that I like to, to share. I was going to share with you guys a little bit of here what I have, like, you know, these mantras and affirmation. I have this, uh, these cards, it's called the um, Miracle Cards, Miracles Now card that I love. And, um, you know, I'm sure with you some of these cards I have, it's called my positive energy leaves a powerful impression uh, in the world. So I have that up all the time, you know, to remind myself of how to show up when I'm on camera, when I shine bright, I give permission to shine with me. Okay. Um, Here's another one, a card that I pulled when I before I started this live is I make time to recharge my battery. Um, the world needs my energetic light. How fitting was that? This was a card I pulled just before I started live. And I was so fit into this topic that I make time to recharge my battery because the world needs my energetic light. Okay. So I hope you find this helpful. These are just some of the cards. I have another one that I really like. It's the uh, How to Love Yourself uh, cards. And it gives a lot about, you know, like valuing yourself, loving yourself. And, you know, for those who need to work on that. So there's a good deck of cards to, to have. Um, ooh, this is, I just pulled this one. And stress management. I am not restricted by my limiting beliefs. I am not restricted by my limiting beliefs, right? Talk about those positive self-talk. How important is that, right? Um, my day begins with and ends with self-love and appreciation. You know, talk about the self-care here, okay? Okay. Where do we get these cards, someone asked. Um, just check it out on um, Amazon. Amazon should have it. If you just type in um, affirmation cards, like how to love yourself cards there. The other was the, the miracle cards. Um, this was from uh, Gabrielle Bernstein. You can get it on Amazon or for those in Canada, like on chapters uh, as well. Okay, I really like it. I think they're about $20, 20 bucks for like a deck of 50 cards. Uh, I, I really like this, okay? Yeah, true abundance is an inside job, all right? So this is all about feeling that true abundance within, right? When the world feels chaotic, lots of change, you need to feel that true abundance within you as well. Okay. Oh, Yana said you have these cards. Yes, I love it. I really love them. It just, you know, it just it lifts my day as well, just to remind myself, right? Um, you can just write this out as well. Like some of them, like I get my clients to write it on a post-it note or create a vision board, you know, surround yourself with positivity. I love motivational quotes. You probably see that I have like, I have a lot of these positive uh, quotes here uh, that I use. Okay. Okay. So let me see here. I'm going to see um, so any questions here. Um, let me check out if there's any other questions here. Okay, so remember, you guys, you got this here. So let me check. Okay. Oh, this is a great question from Patty. How do you deal with your saboteur when it came out and keep motivated? Mm, this is a good one. How do you deal with it? And so it depends on how um, how big the saboteur is. So there's actually, um, a book, I forgot what it's called. Um, the, uh, if you look up PQ reps, PQ, it's all about understanding what your saboteurs are. It's a free assessment. Um, there are different types of saboteurs. And so one could be being also like a high achiever, um, or being like a pleaser. It, it's to recognize that what they are and essentially recognize like, like coming up with like opposite strategy of what you need to do. So for example, like one of my top saboteurs is like, I'm always like achieving or working like all the time. And, and one of my, 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 I have a dear friend of mine, Asima, who is always reminding me to also like relax and all that. And, and so it is all about um, recognizing it and then giving myself, you know, setting boundaries of what do I need to do um, to take care of myself there? 
Okay. It's also having that internal dialogue of recognizing it and how is that making me feel and what do I need to do uh, about it there? Okay. And a lot of times it's actually quieting our mind instead of just having to think, it's just a quieter mind. Okay. So something that could be also simple in terms of movement is that you can do something as like even if you have like your stress or saboteurs, like uh, moving your uh, fingers here, just doing something like this, rubbing your, your fingers, just rubbing it to help calm you. So it could be as simple, I'll give it this, like as I say, if I'm angry at my kids or I'm frustrated, for example, like even just doing something simple like this to remind yourself to calm down as well, okay? You're welcome, thank you. This has been a great inspiration to reframe and start a more effective search, absolutely. Yeah, this is all about reframing, right? It's reframing, seeing things from different perspective as well, like knowing that um, there is light at the end of the tunnel, believing in that, uh, that is so key. Could you suggest a networking online group or any job search groups? I would suggest check out on LinkedIn, type in uh, job search groups. I don't have some specifics in mind, but you type in there's tons of job search groups or even check out in like your own local areas as well. Um, uh, network like for networking groups check out um, sites like eventbrite.com sometimes I'll have like networking events I know for me like I usually once a quarter I'll facilitate like online networking event where people come together like 40 to um, 80 people on zoom to talk about their story their career story and I give that training to help people practice their elevator pitch to help them improve their confidence and to help them improve their networking so feel free, you can subscribe to my a wait list on my website as well under events. Um, and I'll plan when I plan for my next networking event. It's usually the next one will probably be around March uh, timeframe there as I just ran one. Okay. Okay. Anything else? Let me see here. You're welcome, guys. Oh, yeah. Okay. Good. Any other questions that you guys have about uh, the job search here? I hope this was helpful, right? This is at the end of the day, um, you know, it's all about working yourself. Like the most important, you can, the most important work you can do is the inner work, right? In terms of your mind, your emotions, um, as that's going to impact the way you're going to show up in this world. So I hope that I was able to offer some practical tips today to help you with, um, dealing the stress the anxiety with the job search there i really want to send you out all my best sending you guys like lots of good vibes as well um yeah lots of lots of good vibes to, to you all and i want to wish you all like a happy holiday make sure to spend some quality time with your family and uh, take some time to to reflect as well there okay all right so i'm going to wrap up if there isn't anything else here i think that that's all the questions for uh today and uh, I'm going to share just a little outro video here to, to, to wrap things up. Okay. So, well, thank you so much, everyone. I hope you guys have a wonderful day. And I hope to see you next week at the Career Relaunch Summit. Take care. Cheers.